G'day Bomber fans, well, that one sucked, <laughs> that is as deflating a loss as you can get, don't get me wrong, I am immensely proud of the boys and that effort, uh, but we deserve to win that game against the form team of the comp, we could have sent a statement out and we didn't, the siren sounded with us in front, but they sang the song, it's as upset I, as I've been uh, after a loss in a long time, but there's still plenty of positives, plenty to talk about, uh, so get your votes in down below, 321 Bomber players only, and stick around till the end to hear about Manscaped. So so the game started, it was slippery, you could tell, and that favoured port, they were playing as we thought they would, really physical, contest based, they had us covered around the ground and had the pill living in our defensive 50, they were dominating everywhere in that first quarter, uh, well aside from the scoreboard, they only led by a goal at quarter time despite having 18 inside 50s to 8. Part of it was bad goal conversion, they wasted some really simple opportunities to keep us in the game, uh, part of it was our defence, we were rock solid down there, Laverde was huge, he kicked our first goal and was killing their entries, BZT was big, our small defenders were, were up and about, they were rowdy, but it wasn't pleasing, we were we were hanging on by a thread really, they had the game controlled and if they fixed their conversion probably would have led uh, by 4 or 5 goals. The second quarter as we usually do, we found our feet, we started to get control more, we got our uncontested marks as we like to do, we found targets inside 50 consistently, our forward pressure was immense, we actually had the game on our terms for I would say over half the quarter and we started missing chances, the roles reversed, in the first they kicked 2 goals 7 in the second we kicked two goals six but more importantly we were in the fight we weren't close to them because of their mistakes we had earned our way back in the contest and only trailed by a goal at half time the third quarter was pleasing that was as good as we've looked around the contest against a good team all year we started killing them in clearances where it mattered most we started seeing Hobbs and Perkins outbody players like Rosie and Butters we had the game and Port Adelaide where we wanted we kicked three goals they kicked one and we led the premiership quarter by nine points the fourth quarter I don't really want to talk about it but I guess I have to. I mean, you can't really say much about that term. It was all about momentum, really. They kicked early goals. They looked to have finished us off. We we found our way back. Uh, three late goals, including what at the time looked like a Jai Caldwell sealer. And the siren sounded. We were in front, uh, but then Houston, ball in hand, about 55 metres out. You just knew it was going in. Credit to him and Port Adelaide. We dished up what was one of the best games of the year, us two teams. It was intense finals like footy. Uh, Port are just clutch. They have won 12 in a row for a reason. A lot of them close. We talk about Collingwood winning close games uh, last year and this year but Port are around that mark too, it's their second they've won after the siren. So where was the game lost? In the end it's all about taking opportunities, 10 goals 14 some really easy ones we missed, not going to name names because that is not important, it was a team effort in front of goal but we definitely could have kicked more than the 10 goals we kicked so this is a big one for me. But despite missing opportunities we were still in the game uh, we should have won the game in fact, Port though were just the more clutch of the teams, they played that last period so well, they locked the ball in with the presence they had around the ball, but still had numbers outside 50 as well, long kicks like Farrell and Houston, uh, anyone outside that 50 could have marked and kicked the goal or found the target inside, they knew what they were doing there, they knew we would eventually exit the chaos, they knew it would be rushed and they knew they could score from it, we fumbled a bit looking back on that last minute, we made some errors, but it was as a team, it can't be blamed on Parrish or Martin or anyone, we lost that game as a team. I should say the wet weather came at such a frustrating time, you can't blame weather obviously, Mother Nature isn't exactly picking sides, but she definitely had a weekend multi with Port to win. That third quarter was when the rain picked up. It almost slowed us down a bit, our scoring at least. Uh, Port are just a better contested side and it showed in the wet. We struggled to adapt to the conditions as well as Port. I thought we were good in the wet, just not as good as them. They are a stronger side physically. One little nitpick, I think I was more confused than anything by the sub decision in the wet, taking off a pressure impact player like Menzi for someone who thrives in the dry like Shield. I was more puzzled by that. I think a more viable option in those conditions may have been someone like Wiedemann to despite him being alright. Um, I don't know who, but you want forward pressure. Our midfield setup was working as it was without Shield. Sydney the other night didn't use their sub. We could have done the same. I want to take time to talk about some things I really liked, because in a lot of ways, this was our best game of the year. If we won, if that Houston kick fell uh, half a metre short, we would all be saying it's our win of the year. But I think we need to highlight all the positives, even though we don't get the points. Starting with the grunt and guts we showed. Not only to fight back, but to stay with Port and get on top of them for most of the game. That was unreal, a terrific performance. They got to hold their heads high, the boys, because... 
Port are equal first on the ladder. They have won 12 games in a row now, and we have lost twice by under a goal to them. That just shows how competitive we are. Our contest work was really good to see. We looked up to the fight, and for second year players and third year players like Hobbs, Caldwell, and Perkins to be so integral to our dominance when we were up and about is uplifting. We don't have Setterfield. Shield is unfit, underdone. We were up against one of, if not the best midfields in the comp, and we had them rattled. You gotta be proud of it. It was great to see. The wet weather made it hard for Wiedemann and Wright to impact the game. Same too for Dixon and Marshall down the other end, but I thought our small forwards were brilliant. Guelphie, Menzi, Stringer were great. Snelling, the pressure shown, um, was unreal at times from them. Even Langford was getting around it at ground level. We made it hard for them to be clean out of defence. Something great to see after our loss to Frio last week and how easy it was for their defenders to exit. I actually thought our most impactful players were the ones without stats to their names. You saw Phillips, Laverde, uh, Zerk Thatcher, Guelphie. I could go on naming these players. It was a, a team performance. Even players like Wiedemann and Kelly, who people love to criticise, they stood up when it mattered a lot of the time. They will cop criticism. Uh, Wiedemann for his miss and the fact he hasn't kicked a goal in five games. And I agree, he should be kicking goals. He he is lucky to be in this team, but I thought this was his, his best game in a long time. Kelly had some great moments, some moments he would like back, but um, they both had huge moments to get us back in the game. Moments that will go un unnoticed. I actually think uh, Wiedemann had a much more impactful game than Wright. That is just my opinion. In the end, Port are just a better team. Did they deserve to win? It's hard to say. I think we had that game in control and had it taken from us, but they are the better team. They are one of the best. Butters, Rosie, Houston, uh, they were all just too clutch in the end. Farrell was great. It's it's tough to swallow after the siren losses always are, but this one just has a little extra to it. We, we had them. One of the best teams. We had them right on the ropes, but just couldn't get it done. Credit to Port and Guys, I've seen a lot of people, you know, blaming the umpires, blaming Wiedemann or blaming others. If you think certain players or officials on the ground lost us that game, you are... I'm sorry, but you're kidding yourselves. We have to just own these losses sometimes. Losses that slipped away. Yes, it's hard, but it's fair. You can't go blaming the umpires. I want to reiterate, I am so proud of that effort. That was gutsy. I'm proud of the boys, but I wanted that to be a win. We we should have won that, and I think the fact I'm so disappointed shows that Brad Scott has effectively built a great platform for expectations. We now go out seeking wins, not effort, and that is a great spot to be in as a club. We are a year off a bottom four finish, losing behind a goal to arguably the best team in the comp. Um, and we are upset about it. That is a great feeling to have. No more admirable losses. We now as a fan base are hungry for wins because of what Scott is building. All right, votes time. Get yours down in below. I have one to Andrew Phillips who rucked against no one and did so effectively. I have two to Cole Langford. Um, he was our cleanest forward in the wet and most important player four to the ball, but three to Caldwell. He looked like he was playing in the dry. He, he really fumbles. You can back him to make good decisions and now that he's winning more of the ball is being so impactful for us, especially late in games. He really does turn up clutch. It's a funny week for votes. I fully expect you guys to choose a different three. Ridley was great. Redmond was great. Zerk Thatcher and Laverde were brick walls. I thought Merritt was super. Guelphie, I think he deserves a vote too. I'm probably missing some more uh, Hobbs that third quarter. Um, so yeah, get your votes in down below. Hopefully we see some variety because some players deserve votes. Uh, but that is that. Now a quick word from Manscaped. Bomber fans, tough losses like that will have you sweating, but you can eliminate body odors and stinky balls with Manscaped. Great body grooming gear and with me you can get 20% off and free shipping using my discount code everything SNN20. Cheers, Bomber fans.